immediate. What is the period? None means only it will runs for once. Hourly means every hourly, daily, weekly. You can schedule as a recurrent job. That is your wish. Okay, save. That job will be scheduled. So whatever the standard housekeeping jobs you want to schedule, you are scheduling manually here. You are scheduling manually here. But when it comes to S4 HANA, but when it comes to S4 HANA, instead of that standard background jobs, there is a new tab we have. What is that? Technical job repository. What is that? Means the technical job repository is was initially developed to support automatic background job scheduling in cloud-based SAP S4 HANA systems. Automatic background job scheduling for cloud-based S4 HANA systems. Later, it is acquired by on-premise systems also. On-premise means now these systems, whatever we have installed here. So actually, uh, SAP needed a mechanism to run certain recurring means periodic background jobs automatically in every SAP system without the need of any external intervention or monitoring. Means automatically it has to be scheduled in your system without any user intervention. Previously, we are manually scheduling that. But when it comes to S4 HANA, SAP wanted to make these all housekeeping jobs automatic. For that, they have given two options. One is from SM36 job repository. From SM36 job repository. Or else, they have come up with a new T code called S job repo. S job repo, the new change in S4 HANA systems. So here also it is the same thing. Just give star and it will show you all the standard housekeeping jobs of SAP. So when you install your SAP S4 HANA server, first of all you need to check in this. These are automatically activated generally. But you need to check the status. Jobs are automatically scheduled by technical job repository. Automatic, is it active or not? You need to check. If it is not active, then what you need to do? All these are your housekeeping jobs of S4 HANA. They are automatically scheduled by your technical job repository. So if it is not automatically scheduled, so you need to activate that. How you need to activate that? Important interview question. Go to C38 and run a report called R, R underscore JR underscore util underscore 1. Remember this report. If you run this report, it will give you three options. If you execute this, it will give three options. So it will show you the status. Okay, I want to check my status whether they are automatically activated or not. If not, I need to activate. Check, execute. So the job repository, job automation is currently active in this system. So you need not to do anything. Actually, it is activated. And the default step user for technical jobs is DDAC. In this 300, I logged into which client? 300 client. In this client, for this technical jobs to run, a default step user will be assigned. That user is DDAC user. If you want to give, you can give any other user. I have told you, you can create a system user and again assign that user. Or else, by default, it will be DDAC. If you want to change this DDAC user, or if you want to deactivate this, then what is the report? Same. Go with the second. Run that report. Go with the change job repository state. If it is active, okay. If it is not active, then go with the second one and say execute. It will ask you, job repository automation is currently inactive. Do you want to activate the job repository automation? It will ask you. You should, then you should to say yes, it is already activated. That's why it is asking for deactivation. If it is not active, then it will ask you for activation. If you say yes, it will ask you for a transport request. If you want, you can create that into a transport request or not. Or that is later we will discuss what is about transport request. And if you want to change any this standard default step user, then also same report. Third option, default step user select and execute so in 300 client the default step user is ddac do you want to modify the default step user if you say yes it will ask you which user my user is what sap hub user i want to give this user okay fine then give see sap hub user changed so by this using this user id this user should have access for all the things 
system administrator authorization this user needs to have okay if you want to change that again same step set user again go to ddic your wish like means for this automation of these jobs one step user is mandatory remember that and that should be in active mode remember these two things and if you go to sm36 sorry s job repo s job repo all these jobs are by default they are scheduled they are executing see green status see all these jobs are executing few job status is not relevant what is the meaning of not relevant means if you go here and double click on that it will tell you execution terms administrative client and business client will be having a different different clients for example i'll show you i have logged into 300 client this is my business client go to scc4 we'll discuss tomorrow all this scc4 only don't get confused so here i am having two clients one is triple zero when you install your sap system by default you will get this so this client will have access to all the cross client data means entire authorizations so few jobs only runs in this client few jobs only runs in your business client few jobs can run in both clients that is what the meaning of that relevant and non relevant so if you go with that relevant option sm36 job repository from here also you can go right if you go and check there so not relevant means it is saying in this what is this client 300 client so this 300 client it is not accessible that is the reason it is saying not relevant if you can run this job in this client then it will be in relevant mode remember that so few jobs only runs in triple zero client few standard jobs few your business related jobs all your customizing jobs that will run in your business client few jobs are there which will run in both uh, okay is it fine is job repo yes, remember sir. this t code s yes, wait okay one job is running i don't want that job to run automatically they are scheduled right i don't want for example this job i don't want to run what i need to do select that job and say f f a f7 i think yeah f7 do you really want to deactivate the technical job definition or unschedule the background job in this client if you say yes it will be automatically deschedule for example if some job is not running then how to activate that job same select that job and say function f4 do you want to activate reactivate yes you can activate you can activate you can deactivate the job it is not mandatory to run all the jobs i don't need this job you can activate you can deactivate okay you can run few jobs in your administrative client few jobs in your business client that is what this s job repo so in, uh, the good news is in s4 hana 2023 they again given this standard background jobs scheduling in sm36 only you need not to go to your uh, s job repo t code again previously it was sm36 they changed it to s job repo now again they came to sm36 why they came i don't know okay uh, any doubts here guys regarding your standard background jobs and customizing jobs uh, housekeeping jobs and job starting condition steps okay one more time we'll go through all these things okay what is that so background job uh, how this background work process is different from dialog work process two ways one is dialog work process has a run time limit and there is no such limit for your background work process and the uh, memory usage sequence of dialog work process and the non dialog work process are different background job starting conditions are immediate date and time after job after event at operation mode for all these 
for immediate dialog output process will take care the work, take the work and it will assign to background output process for all these date and time after job after event at operation mode your time driven time dependent scheduler will run for each and every 60 seconds in every instance that will take care of that will uh, responsible starting for of these background jobs immediate means it will start immediately date and time means specific date and time here you will be having option of no start after if you want you can give that after a job means uh, after executing one job it will trick this new job here also you will be having option of start status dependent if you select that start status dependent if the previous job runs successfully then only this job will run otherwise no after event you can trick events in sap whenever that event triggered your job will be started at operation mode change when you switch to your night mode or non peak hours then you can schedule a background job these are the background job starting conditions and background job steps what you can schedule as a background job means above program external commands and external programs you know all these things and the background job status important interview question scheduled release ready active finished cancelled scheduled means if a background job created without any start condition if you don't use any of that five start conditions then it will be in scheduled if you use any one of the start condition that that job will be in release state when a work process is allocated to a background job at a starting condition then it is called as a ready the work process allocated to execute this background job then it is ready if it is started executing that is active if it is finished successfully finished if it is cancelled cancelled and uh, we will see the background job troubleshooting also but it is not the right time to show you all that background job troubleshooting when we are discussing about uh, troubleshooting classes then we'll discuss all the troubleshootings okay it is too early to go through all the new new t codes you don't know all these t codes right so the new t codes for today is sm36 and sm37 scheduling a background job is very easy but the problem is if the background job is running for so long then how you troubleshoot that is the challenging issue how you how you say if a background job is running for long time how can you decide some jobs will run for one hour some jobs will run for one week some jobs will run for one month also then which time you say it is running for long time how can you decide whether a job is running for long time or not then you have to check whether the same job previously ran for how much time if it is executed within one hour now it is taking more than one hour means obviously it is taking a long time previously it was executed in 2 minutes now it is taking more than 10 minutes means then it is considered as a background job is running for long time previously it was run for one month now it is running from past one and a half months that means this background job is long running job background job itself is long running job but how you define how you troubleshoot a long running job means you have to check previously how much time it has to to execute that job based on that only you can decide it is running delay or not we will see all those things sm37 also uh, we are having and sm65 there is another t code called sm65 there also you can check uh, background job all the things are running successfully or not is there any problem in this background job scheduler or your events so it will check everything is okay all test completed successfully no problem detected sm65 you can check this and there are some programs are there by using that you can analyze your background processing is this fine any doubts here 